my Equigenera order came in and I have a wish list plant that I saved for last. I'm gonna unpack, unbox, it's not in a box, so it's gonna have to be unpacked, but I'm gonna do that for you right now. And you guys can watch along while I get it out of its packaging and you guys can see what kind of condition it's in along with me. If you've never unboxed an order from Equigenera before, if you've never ordered from them before, here's a little taste of what you can expect. Hey plant fiends, welcome back. This is Nick from Propist. Thanks for being here. I think the eagle-eyed amongst you probably noticed my brown bag wrapped in cellophane that is the tip-off that I have an Equigenera unboxing for you. I am calling it an unwrapping. It's not really an unboxing. You can see I've got my fingers stealthily covering the tag here so you guys can't see what this is. But this is my latest Equigenera import and this is actually the last of all of the plants that I've unboxed so far, whatever you want to call it. This is the last one, the grand finale. It's what I actually kind of added to my order after the fact. Thankfully it was there. So I am super pumped to open this thing up. I have been waiting for one of these guys for a really long time. I am so happy to finally have one and you probably can't guess what it is, but I will tell you it's an Anthurium. I won't tell you what kind because it'll probably give it away. I don't know what kind of condition it's in. I have left this a little longer than the rest to unpack, but see I've got a couple of my other trophies sitting back here on the, the stand beside me that are both looking really nice, still acclimating. I thought I would unwrap this guy on camera for you guys so you can see what you're getting into if you've never ordered from Equigenera before. And so you can see a cool plant if you have ordered before and you were just wondering what this guy looked like. If you see this wrapper, you probably know what you're looking at if you ever ordered from Ecuador before. Equigenera for sure uses these guys. Not sure about Tropicals, the yeah, Equiflora, they might use a similar kind of packaging. I've never ordered from them, but from what I've seen, it looks like it's something similar. You'll see that these guys pretty much always flat pack. And honestly, it's an art form getting these things into these packages. I have no idea how they manage to flatten everything so nicely, but whoever does it, I'm props to them for having amazing talent and flattening pretty large plants into very small packages. I mean, you can see how paper thin this thing is. First thing you want to do when you're opening these guys up is take off the outer cellophane. It's not the most spectacular wrapping job, but it's got some cellophane. It's got some packing paper on there. It's usually some masking tape or something. And they've got your code from your order on there. Mine's BB, but I mean, I don't know what it means to them, but it sure doesn't mean anything to me. Typically, you'll see the tags on here too. That guy there. I'm covering up the label on purpose, but there is a label that tells you exactly what the plant is. And actually, Actually, the climate is listed beneath it, which may have given some of this away. But actually what I'm gonna do first is take off this tag so I don't spoil it for you guys right off the bat. So there's my tag. So you can see it's a plant tag. I'll tell you what it is afterwards. Maybe you guys can guess for yourselves. Next task here is to open this guy up. So why don't we do that? I'm gonna gently cut through this. And typically what I do is I just unpack at the bottom here. I snip their masking tape, unfold it because it's usually folded up. So the root ball is typically in sphagnum moss. I've never actually received a package bare root from these guys. There's always a um, root ball wrapped in sphagnum moss that's typically packed in plastic. Um, so it's got like some cellophane or plastic wrap in a ball around it. There we go, got the wrapper off. Inside here we've got the paper bag. Gonna cut this guy as well. And be super careful cutting through here because it's pretty thin paper and you definitely don't want to cut through your plant's leaves or the root ball at the same time. So if you can get it off without cutting, sure. In my case, um, particularly with the longer packages like this, I will often cut the paper all the way along because it's just harder to take out. And sometimes the plants have a little bit of damp inside of the container um, just from shipping and from the fact that there was some moisture inside of the root ball packaging. So it's possible, but in this case, I think I could just kind of reach in and grab it. Um, spare myself the pain in the butt of having to cut it out. All right, here goes nothing. The unveiling. Ooh, wow. So at first blush, this may not look like much, and I would challenge you to ID this just by looking at it. I'm pretty sure people who are familiar with anthuriums can probably tell what this is right off the bat. This is a pendant anthurium, and if you can guess, I'll give you a second to try and figure out what it is. It does look a lot like a pallidiflorum, although there's many differences from the pallidiflorum that anybody who's familiar with it will probably tell you right off the bat that's not what it is. So this is actually an Anthurium Wenlingeri. And I have had my eyes on one of these for a long time. I've been trying to get a seedling locally. I've had a really hard time getting one. The last one I saw for sale was over on Vancouver Island from a really trusted seller out there, but I think he was selling them for close to $400 Canadian for a seedling. For what it's worth, I got this for less than half of that price, which is great. And I haven't seen one that cheap in forever. So I'm really glad that Equigenera is carrying these now. Um, it does mean that they're probably a little less rare than they were before. 
anymore. You can see this leaf is probably gonna go. I think this already got some yellowing going on and that's not too unexpected. What I do wanna see is that this guy looks pretty nice and I wanna keep him that way. So we've got four leaves, five leaves. I'm gonna take the plastic off so you guys can get a better look. So the next task here is to take this, so this is root ball here. Is wrapped up in cellophane and it's got a bunch of sphagnum moss around what is probably a pretty small root ball. And I'm guessing this is a seedling. I can't remember if I ordered a seedling. It might have been. I have to take a look at my order. So I've just got my Equigenera packing list in front of me here. I don't know if you can take a look at what I ordered there. Doesn't have the prices, just has the big list. I've got my, my check marks of what I ordered. Anybody who's really curious can take a look. So what I ordered was not marked as a seedling, so I'm just guessing that these are seedlings. But I mean, size-wise, this is definitely on the seedling size, but I'll take it. And uh, considering how much these usually run for, getting it at the price I got it for, I will not complain. It wasn't on sale. This I just bought because I knew they were gonna sell out pretty quickly. And you know what? It was worth it. I'm sure if you wait a few months, you can probably catch one of these on sale in one of their next sales. But typically the first release of any plant on Equigenera is not on sale and you're going to be paying full price for it. And actually, as far as prices go, this was not as high as I expected for a Wendling Garai. So I'm super pumped to have this guy. I already have a Palladiflorum that's doing super well in my tent. And I have a Vitarifolium that I've had for a number of years that has been kind of off and on. Doesn't seem to like my house too much, but he seems better in the tent. But I'm looking forward to this guy. They're nice like really thick leaves i mean i'm kind of surprised at the texture here um it's almost like plastic to be honest like it's pretty funny i was expecting it to be a bit more velvety and this one is a, definitely a bit more kind of like on the rubbery texture side which is kind of cool actually reminds me a bit of the bicolor that i've got here this is a philodendron bicolor doesn't quite have the same texture to it but in terms of kind of rigidity and thickness of the leaves like that definitely falls into the same category so yeah why don't we take the the root ball out of the plastic here and see what we're dealing with so it can always be kind of hit or miss in terms of the root condition in here but most of my anthuriums in this shipment and in previous shipments have been in really good shape i have much worse luck with philodendrons which almost always come to me with terrible roots monsteras tend to do pretty well i think i've kept most of my orders from equigenera to philodendron monstera and I don't think I've ordered a Syngonium from there, so I can't speak to that. And I don't usually order any allocations or co-locations from them because the selection is pretty thin. And I know they're, they're really well known for their orchids, which I also am not really all that into. So I'm just taking the plastic off while we're talking here. I've got my handy bucket, which again, throwback. Anybody who's watched all of my videos will know where these came from. I'm gonna unpack this. I've noticed that they tend to kind of smush the sphagnum moss kind of around the root ball like a sandwich. If you are thinking about that ahead of time, it's actually pretty easy to kind of unpack them like this. So what I'll do is I'm just going to unfold the sphagnum from around it. So I'm just going to pop it off here. And if you're just super careful so you don't damage the roots, it'll come off like a bit of a sandwich. So there we go. Not much of a root system on this guy. I can tell you that right now. This is pretty pretty thin as far as roots go. So I'm gonna have to do some rooting on this guy. And I think I'm probably gonna put him into tree fern for a bit to root. So that's a new uh, chunk of effort there that's gonna have to happen. Yeah, these roots are not the greatest and there's not much going on here. So I really hope this guy survives. I will be putting him into tree fern. So you can take a look there. That is absolutely the worst roots out of any anthurium I've received today. <laughs> oh, there you go. One leaf came right off. This was probably going to come off no matter what because you can see it's already browning at the edge there. But yeah, not a whole lot of roots on here. And this one is pretty loose. Like this is broken already. So I'm going to just take my snips here. Chop this guy off because he did. Okay, the rest of the roots, what you can call these roots, there's not a whole lot here. I'm just going to pluck off any sphagnum here. So I'm going to pop this guy into water for the next little bit here. I'm just getting made of all the moss first. But I mean, I'm gonna soak this and these guys are gonna go into semi-hydro. So first off, I'm just kind of getting rid of any bits of cruft attached on here. I don't wanna lose the other leaf that's at the bottom. It looks like there's actually a growing point. It's very hard to see, but it's in there. Kind of right here, there's a growth point right there. How do you can see that? It's kind of underneath this right there. And it's got a couple of these baby leaves at the bottom, which are probably gonna fall off, I would expect, but I'm just gonna keep it there just to be safe. So. We've got the four leaves, but there's not a whole lot of roots to support it. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, this one's gone too, honestly. These are not great. I'm gonna have to reroute this from the stump and there's just not a lot of stump to go on. I'm gonna take some pictures of this. Uh, I do have a good aerial root here, so that might work out. So there's an aerial root right there. You can see that. That looks like it's in pretty good shape. And then these guys, they're attached, but not great. And this one's actually falling off too. So there you go. That's what I'm left with. I'm left with kind of two root stumps 
bit dried out and an aerial root there. So this is gonna take a little bit of work to root up, but we'll see what we can do. I might even propagate it here, but I think what I'm gonna do is acclimate it a little bit first before I cut it and see if that aerial root that's there takes off. So we're gonna do this, pop this into water for now. This is literally just a deli container with water. I'm gonna pop it in here for the time being. Kind of soak it up to where the top aerial root is floating around. Yes, a little bit of the petiole of where that bottom leaf is in there too, but it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna let that sit for a bit. If you are not familiar with the Wen Linger, I, I think it's probably worth doing a little bit of Instagram searching for it. I think what the most striking thing about the Wen Linger Eye is the inflorescence. If you take a look at the inflows on this thing, you will know exactly why I bought this and why everybody should have one. So I'll throw a picture of that up on the side somewhere around here and you guys can take a look at what it looks like, but it creates these awesome corkscrew inflows which I have never seen in life or in botany or anywhere ever. <laughs> so so it, it's so stunning and I really hope that I can eventually create one of those myself. Based on what I've heard, it could probably take up to anywhere from like, you know, a couple of years plus for it to get to a point where it's big enough and happy enough and acclimated enough to actually produce those inflows. But I'm really looking forward to it. So yeah, not much to look at roots wise, but you know what, with Equigenera, sometimes you end up with the huge root system, sometimes you end up with the small one. So what you want to do with these Equigenera imports is to rehydrate them. I mean, personally, what I do is kind of like at least 24 to 48 hours in water like this and just keep it in room temperature and sit it on a heat mat. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna pop this guy into one of these containers here, and I'm gonna sit this like so on a heat mat. And again, good trick if you're not particularly used to doing this, you don't need to sit them up like this in the box, you can actually sit them like this. So I'm gonna pop it in here like so. And this guy's pretty short, I actually lay it like this, you know, lengthwise. And I pop that into the box and have the box sit on a heat mat. And I will run the heat mat between 20 and 23 degrees Celsius. I typically run them around 21. So I've popped him over here, kind of sitting with his brethren over there. What I'll do next is pop that whole Tupperware, or whatever you want to call it, plastic box, onto a heat mat controlled by one of these Inkbird thermostats. I've bought a bunch of these guys. I do like these thermostats. I actually bought a couple more recently. Here's what they look like in case you're curious. The ones I bought, and I'll link these in the description below, these guys have the controls up here where you can set the temperature and they've got two outlets on here. And these are just the heating model. They make a heating and a cooling model if you wanna run like a ventilation unit or if you wanna run a humidifier on here as well. They've got models for both those uses. The other advantage here, this has actually got a little thermometer that you can plug in here and kind of stick into wherever. It keeps track of the ambient temperature. And I think that is super handy. So these guys are great. I use them all the time. Again, this is like the, the Inkbird smart home thermometer with a temperature probe. It's like a five foot cord on there, which is pretty handy. And those are great for keeping track so you don't burn your seedlings or your projects in terms of like rerouting, et cetera. You know what, I'm gonna show you just so you can compare the roots and it's a much bigger plant, but just so you can compare the condition of the roots. This guy here is a crystal Lux. So this is a Anthurium crystallinum luxuriens hybrid. So A, first off, doesn't that look amazing? Like this is the most reptilian Anthurium I think that I own. It's got this really cool kind of matte sheen, like a satin sheen to it. That is not too dissimilar from the Marmoratum that I talked about in one of my shorts previously. I really like the look of this thing, but the roots on these guys are fantastic. Look at that. What do they call it? Forbidden Ramen. I, I should give credit where credit is you. That came from Russo Plant Care, which is an awesome channel if you're into anthuriums particularly it's anthurium hybridization and pollination that kind of fun stuff he's got some awesome videos and i'll link him in the description too that's the roots that came on there and that like yeah the forbidden ramen as they call it these are great roots so comparatively speaking and actually the <laughs> when linger was more expensive than this by about half just for reference that's the kind of roots i expect on my anthuriums coming in now this is a larger plant for sure and it's got, you know, three large leaves. It had one smaller leaf that came off already that was way at the bottom there. It kind of didn't do it with shipping. It's got one little baby leaf that's kind of coming in right there. I don't know if you can see that. This is a pretty sweet ass plant. I am super looking forward to getting this guy potted up. He's gonna sit in water for a couple of days inside of one of these humidity containers, the plastic box I showed you earlier. And then after that, I will move him into likely pond because I keep most of my anthuriums in pond. I'm gonna have a hard time putting this guy back now. So sorry if it looks a little funky back there, but he's kind of hard to keep up in a pot of water by himself. The wind linger I hear with the tiny roots or lack thereof, those ones I'm probably gonna put into tree fern fiber, I think. My experience with anthuriums is that root Rooting and rehabbing 
and theorems that don't have roots or that have rotten roots, for instance. In this case, it's kind of a bit of both, like doesn't have much and what's there was like partially rotten or broken from shipping. And the actual like seedling repotting, like I've done a seedling video where I use tree fern combined with perlite pretty extensively. In those cases, I will use tree fern with perlite. Tree fern is pretty expensive, so I tend to cut it with perlite kind of 50-50. And it does pretty much the same thing. And the grabbiness of the tree fern is still there. And the perlite is really good at kind of wicking out the moisture and holding it around the roots and giving it something to grab onto. We'll see how these guys pan out. I'll do a little bit of a check-in in a couple of months and see how they're doing. Hopefully that when Lingerai survives, I'm a little cautious about those roots, lack thereof again. It's one of those situations where, particularly with seedlings, if you're ordering from Equigenera, seedlings or very small plants like that, they're kind of iffy on the root systems. Like I've bought a, a Metallicum before, an Anthurium Metallicum that came in a similar situation. I had bought three of them and at the end of the day, only one made it. And I did get a refund for one of them that the roots were just completely shot on it. The other one I killed off just purely due to not noticing that there was root rot and it kind of got through the pond much faster than I could pay attention to and I didn't notice it so that was my mistake. The last one is still going and he's kind of struggling a little bit because he's just had to reroute from scratch. I think that's the hidden cost of ordering seedlings from Equigenera in my experience. Equigenera is an orchid vendor. I mean they sell all sorts of exotic plants but like I think primarily orchids from Ecuador. Now I've never been to Ecuador in South America. I think the northern end of South America it's on the western side. The closest I've ever been is Panama and Panama has very kind of similar flora to Ecuador or at least close to it and the climate's not too far off either maybe a little bit colder but I do recall being in Panama and kind of like being agape at some of the plants I saw there it's been close to 15 years since I went to Panama if I ever went back I would be a lot more into the flora and the botanical aspect of it because that's something that I wasn't really that into when I was in my late 20s and now I am so I think that would be a fun trip but like Ecuador at some point love to go there too for those of you who are not not familiar with Equigenera or have never ordered from them, they do ship directly in the US. If you're in the US, you probably have a direct line to them. I think they have a US website. If you're in Canada like me or you're outside of the US, you're going to order from their international seller, which is the Ecuadorian site. So I think it's just Equigenera.com. You go there and most of the time they have some sort of like little sale prices here and there, but they have big sales, you know, like pretty much every major holiday, like Mother's Day, Valentine's Day. I think they did a Black Friday sale for a while, like Thanksgiving for sure. Um, they do like a Boxing Day type or Christmas-ish sale. There's sales throughout the course of the year. Like once every quarter, at least you're gonna find one sale at Equigenera. And the time to buy is during those sales. They will ship to you. I think if you're in the US, they'll ship to your door. I'm not sure about international destinations, but for us in Canada, I've never actually had it shipped directly to me. I've always picked it up at one of their pop-up events. Pop-up events tend to happen at least quarterly. And with Equigenera, the shipping is pretty reasonable. I think I spent something like $4 US per plant, I believe, is what I ended up paying for shipping, which is pretty reasonable. And they ship it like air cargo or air freight. So it ends up being like a you know, big old shipping container with all the other plants that have been ordered for your region. So it costs them a lot less to ship than if you were to ship this stuff individually. So if you're shipping it to one of these pop-up events, to one of their sales, like in situ kind of sales, in those cases, you're going to pay a lot less for shipping. If you're shipping it to your door, at, like I said, I've never tried it, but I would expect that the shipping costs will be quite a bit higher. But I do think that you're going to end up with like similar packaging and whatnot in what you receive. And I think from what I've seen from folks ordering to like the UK, for instance, you know, I've watched, I think his name is Memo from House Plenty Goodness. And he unboxed uh, a number of pretty large Equigenera orders on his channel and he's in the UK. And I think he had them delivered directly to him. I might be wrong with that one, but I'm pretty sure it actually came in a crate and showed up at his house. So I'm assuming that folks who want it can have it shipped directly to them. In my case, it's just a lot simpler to go pick it up from the pop-up. So why not? Also one like little Equigenera tip when you're ordering from Equigenera, if you have the option and you're doing like a pickup type of thing, where so in, in my situation, I pick up from the local nursery. It's about 40 minutes drive away from me. They're really well known, Southlands Nursery here in kind of Vancouver area. I pick up from them. I think there's about three different, four different locations that Equigenera does these pop-up shows at. And um, they usually do like 
three, four, five of these a year through COVID. I think there was none for an extended period of time. And then they had two. And then the last year they've had at least four. So like, you know, every three months or so, at least you can come and pick up your plants. And when you're ordering and you're not in the US or in South America, I would assume, they're not going to ship directly to your home. In most cases, you're going to ship to one of these events and then you're going to have to go to the event and go pick up there. I know like for some folks, that's a long drive. For me, 40 minutes is not too big of a deal. It's just kind of on the other side of the city for me. But for some folks, I know you're driving like two, three hours to go to a pop-up event and that's not ideal. But I mean, the fact that they do that many in my area means that they spread it out. I'll link their show listing so you can see what I'm talking about because they do these worldwide. But there's a lot of shows and they come to the same locales like multiple times over throughout the course of the year in, in a lot of cases. So you can probably get what you're looking for. You order it ahead of time and try and order it during their sales. And like I said, the Windlinger I bought there, I didn't buy that one on sale, but every other plant on this order was from a sale. And even in the ones that I had ordered previously that came at a certain price on a certain sale, they had another sale. And I would like cancel my order and reorder specific plants and have them all merge together. And Equigenera is awesome about like merging orders and like adding things from a new order to an old order, etc. So even if you either held off and didn't buy something that was on sale and it came on sale later, or if you bought something and the price dropped in the meantime, you can like cancel your old order and order it again. And it'll just either merge into your order or they will like combine orders for you, et cetera. It works out super well. I've had a great experience with them. They're also really good with returns and refunds if there's a problem with your order. So like in the case of this one linger, I've taken a few photos and I'm going to send them over to my contacts over there. There was one other plant for my order that I thought was in pretty bad shape. Just looking at my notes here. I make notes on these guys. What's good, what's bad. And I have roots mentioned on a number of these, but in most cases, the roots were like, OK, but had some root rot or had some dried bits that just just had to be chopped off. But there was one, the Philodendron Felix. They call it the Hybrido the Felix Medium that had terrible roots. And again, I have the worst luck with philodendrons ordering those through Equigenera. So like in my experience, if you order a philodendron, particularly climbing philodendron from Equigenera, your luck is not going to be the greatest. I've had better luck with kind of like the self-heading types or like the crawlers for some reason. My crawlers from Equigenera look great. Like my Gloriosum dark form looks fantastic. My philodendron luxuriance looks great and it's done super well in high humidity compared to the one I had before, which rotted out after ages of just kind of being a stump. The one I've got is doing fantastically. So I would suggest that if you're going to buy a climbing philodendron, it's not one of these like really thick. Like this is my philodendron bicolor, which again, just came through from the same order. I don't know if you can see the label, philodendron bicolor. This guy, the roots are pretty dried out. Like this is not the fantastic. They were soil roots, but like these are pretty dried out roots. So I'm going to see how it goes. Philodendrons tend to reroot pretty well, but if you get some stem rot going on from these orders, I've had that happen with Plamanii, for instance. Like if I, every time I order a Plamanii or a Mamii, for instance, I find they, they tend to get stem rot really easily. This guy though, he feels like, I don't know, like a piece of wood or rubber, like rubber coated wood. He's strong like ox this guy i'm not super worried about this i think some of these arrow roots are going to come off like this one right here already feels totally dried out but he looks like he's like ready to propagate already look at that already ready to chop there's a bunch of nodes on here so even if the roots don't take and you know these fall off or just rot off completely pretty sure i can reroute one of the nodes on there so not super concerned he's already got kind of the one leaf yellow in there so with this guy he looks like he's kind of ready to propagate already so i might be all right um the philodendron bicolor is like one of those plants where i think i first saw it on james armstrong's channel and if you haven't checked out james armstrong he hasn't posted for a while but the plants that that guy has i was so jealous like i think he was one of the first channels i ever watched besides like the Haley ellens and stuff like that and you know, like epic gardening uh first plant channels i really got into that showed rare plants but like that guy so inspirational the gear that he had the tent that he had with the crazy huge oversized plants that were growing in there and he had some awesome imports that i just cannot find in north america very easily i think just because being in the uk he had access to a lot of importers in like the netherlands etc that were selling stuff that you just couldn't get here i think the first time i saw the bicolor was there and like if you haven't seen a bicolor before that's why the bicolor is cool it's got that red abaxial which is just I mean, I think this one's getting a little yellow, so maybe not the best example, but like, you can see that. It's not too dissimilar to uh, an Ataba Poensi, if you've got one of those, or if you've seen one of those, it's got a similar kind of reddish undertone, 
But it's got this cool kind of candy cane green and red thing going on, which is really neat. And the new Caterpillar is like bright. Well, it's kind of like a burgundy color coming in there. And the new leaf kind of so far, all the abaxial is red as well. I don't know if this new leaf is going to take or not. You never know when these guys, when they kind of come as a new leaf during import, a lot of times they kind of rot off and then it starts propagating itself lower down the plant. That's not unexpected. I would say that you should probably be prepared for that kind of thing, particularly with the philodendron. And again, the root being completely rotten that happens too particularly if you happen to leave these in water for too long you're gonna have that happen as well so what I typically do is I leave them in water for about 24 or 48 hours on the heat mat and then I will repot or transition towards semi hydro in my case I'm a big semi hydro buff shameless self promotion if you haven't watched my semi hydro gear video it's linked up here go take a look at that I'll be moving these guys like the bicolor I'm probably gonna move into Leca, but all of my interiums will typically go into pawn unless they're too fine rooted for pawn or they're rehabbing like i said i'll put those guys into tree fern with perlite 50 50. so if you enjoyed this kind of content and you want to see more like this please do like the video and if you'd like me to produce more stuff like this and you want to see it in the future you can subscribe as well those are signals to me that people are interested in watching this sort of thing so i'd be super happy to have you as part of my community and again post a comment if you would like to see something specific i did import a whole bunch of other plants from echo Jenner this time and there was some interesting stuff in here I'm happy to show some of these plants too. I'll probably do a tour at some point. I think I've got a lot of anthuriums now, um, more than I should. I'm probably have to get rid of a few, but I really wanted to do some hybridization in the future. And that's kind of like sitting there on my wish list. I haven't had a whole lot of plants flower so far. The only anthuriums I've had flower so far have already been hybrids. And I've been a little antsy about taking a hybrid and hybridizing that. But I kind of want to use like one of the known cultivars to try and start with and then kind of work my way into like hybrid hybridization afterwards. Also, you know, when you've got pollen, it's like, you know, you got to save it and use it for the right moment. So I'm hoping that I can gather some pollen from a couple of my um, nicer anthuriums and then use those. So I've, I've got a couple of fun ones like the anthurium pedato radiatum i think i said that right that's like the anthurium fingers i got a couple like that that i wanted to try and hybridize at some point just because they're fun and like you know if you can get them to to hybridize with something completely different there's sections of anthuriums that you have to stay within for hybridization but it's definitely worth a try and you could probably make some really interesting plants at the end of the day and i think that's really something that's on my big to-do list of plants for this year is to try and hybridize something even if i don't get the actual seeds out of it just yet and i only start with the pollination and that sort of thing that would be great but like that's that's on my plant wish list for the year but i think one of the coolest hybrids i've ever seen was a Wenlingeri hybrid i think it's called anthurium chainsaw this would be one of the parent plants for it i think the other plant was the anthurium scherzeranium it is a fabulous looking thing it's kind of bonkers i've got a picture of one on my phone here it produces these crazy inflows that look like i don't know like an octopus tentacle met some sort of chainsaw or something like that it's probably one of the coolest plants i've ever seen but yeah i mean the the actual plant itself looks a lot like the Wenlingeri. Yeah, if I could ever get my hands on one of those hybrids, I would kill for one of those. I'm pretty sure it's going to cost you in the four digits to get your hands on one though, so good luck. Plus like importing it maybe from like NSE Tropicals. I, I think that's the only place I've seen it. I don't know that they actually have any in stock, but you're welcome to like knock yourself out and like, you know, throw bags of money at it. I'm probably not that big of a spender on plants, but I would get one. If I had the choice of like any expensive plant to buy right now, that would be near the top of my list. I managed to get my wishlist anthurium from Equigenera here. Really happy to have this guy. I hope that he survives. I'm not super confident in this root system right now, and I'm definitely going to have to put it into tree fern sooner rather than later. But you know what? It looks pretty good as it is right now, and hopefully these leaves still are looking good in the next couple of weeks. So I'll keep you guys posted on how this guy does. I am 99% sure this big leaf is going to drop because it's already turning yellow, but hopefully the rest of these guys will be okay. That's all I have for you today. I will give you guys an update on the rest of the plants that I picked up at some point in the future. If you have any questions for me about your Equigenera imports, or if you've never imported from Equigenera before, I can do a little guide for that process too. Feel free to drop a comment below, and if you are interested in that kind of thing, I will put something together for you guys. So again, I'm Nick from Propist, and this is an Anthurium Wenlingeri. Hopefully, we'll still be an Anthurium Wenlingeri in a few weeks. If it's not, then we'll have some sad news to share. I would love to have you aboard as part of my community, so please do subscribe below, and I will be posting more videos like this in the future. Thanks for being here, and I will see you in the next one.